Good afternoon, folks. Ed here at Waters West, another beautiful day on the Olympic Peninsula. And today we're going to be tying the Susquehanna Poacher. Susquehanna Poacher is a great winter steelhead fly, king salmon fly, coho salmon fly. Uh, it seems to catch just about everything. Um, so here we go. Let's get started. I'm going to take a uh, 20 millimeter shank. Um, here I got a Senyo shank because it fits nicely on my vise and I can't seem to find my shank adapter. You can use any kind of shank you like. You could even use an old salmon hook and uh, just clip the um, front hook of it when you're done. But we're going to use this one today. So let's get our thread started on there. Work it back. Back of the hook. Like so, and then we're going to go forward one time and back again just to get a base of thread for our trailing hook wire to sit on. Next, we're going to take about a four to five inch long section of Senyo's intruder wire. You can use uh, you know, 30 pound mono, uh, some kind of stiff braid, any way you like to do your trailers. Um, we usually use this wire because uh, we've been using it for a very long time and it works pretty good. Uh, next, you're going to take your wire, double it over, and put it through the eye of a Gamakatsu octopus number two. Again, same thing. You can use any kind of octopus hook you like, but I like these because they are nice and light wire, and if you snag the bottom, uh, You'll typically be able to straighten this hook out without losing your fly and then you can just replace the hook instead of uh, having to replace your fly which is kind of nice at times especially if you're fishing somewhere really snaggy uh, once we got that set up you're going to take that wire and feed it through the eye of the shank pulling it close to the shank and then take two or three not very tight wraps just to position that shank on there and then you're going to pull it backwards what this does is it makes sure that your shank is your wire is straight on there if you try to put tie it just at the right length sometimes it'll kind of want to get wonky on you but if you tie it in short and then you pull it back it'll line itself up real nice once you got that down we're going to take some loose wraps towards the front or not sorry not loose wraps but spaced out wraps towards the front not all the way forward just kind of shy of the eye there and then you can flip this over turn that wire back around Get a few wraps there just to hold that in place like so and take some super glue and just lightly Get a small light coat of super glue around the wire. This is going to make sure that this wire junction is super secure. That way if you run into 40, 50 pound kingy with this fly, you're going to have a chance without the wire pulling out on you. After that, we're going to work our thread back. Pretty close wraps and then back forward with touching wraps. You really want to cover that thing all the way so it's nice and secure. Alright, once you got that done, you take a little bit of that excess super glue and wipe it off so it doesn't stick to your marabou later. It's very frustrating when that happens, so you don't want that happening. Next, we're going to take three strands of electric blue flashaboo. Cut them off. And we're going to tie them in by the very tip right here. Three wraps is plenty to hold them in there. Next, we're going to take flashaboo and wrap it backwards towards the back of the shank there. And 
then we're going to wrap them back to where we started. Like so, tie that off, give it two or three wraps to secure it, clip that off. Next, we're going to take about a one and a half to two inch long piece of just medium black chenille. Standard Danville rayon chenille will work just fine. Feel the fluff off the end of that chenille, expose the core a little bit. Tie it down. And then we're going to make two wraps with the chenille. There's one wrap, and then the next wrap we're going to kind of cross it over itself to build up that prop to flare out our marabou. Two wraps down there, secure it, clip that off. Now we got our base for the rest of our fly. Next step, we're gonna take one black blood quill marabou feather and we're gonna peel all the fluff off the bottom here. try to find the place where that stem gets nice and flexy kind of find the length you want for the fly too and then we're gonna pick about a say half inch section of that marabou and then take the rest towards the tip with a little bit of moisture kind of preen that back and this right here is all the marabou we're gonna um, use off of this feather Take it in there, tie it by the tip, and then work your thread forward with the rest of the wraps. Secure it down. Clip that off there, clip that off right. Now we've got that tied in, you take a little bit more moisture, get in front of a little water bowl or your finger, or you know, just lick your fingers, whatever. And you're gonna slightly Palmer this forward so don't just wrap it over itself like this kind of work it forward a little bit more and I'll show you the reason for that in a second so we work it forward a little bit just like that give the stem a couple of wraps to secure it at this point you can clip the rest of the stem off and you just take that marabou and preen it back a little bit and wrap your thread backwards over those marabou stems. This is going to make this fly last 10 times longer than if you didn't do that wrapping over the stems because the marabou stems are very fragile so they tend to break really easy when a fish bites them especially a big fish with teeth like most Pacific salmon. Next step we're going to do the same thing with a purple marabou feather now. So again we're going to Peel all that fluff off the bottom. We kind of check our length, maybe a little bit less, and then we're going to do the same thing. Find about a half an inch, right where we want it. Like so, a little more, a little less. It's not critical. A little moisture. Train these fibers down it in again work the thread forward a couple times clip it off a little bit of moisture work it round wraps it backward Um, it also helps a lot if you have a dubbing brush or a toothbrush. Hit your fly with it every once in a while just to make sure all your fibers are doing what you want them to do. Next step we're going to take our electric blue flashaboo again. And this time we're only going to take two strands out of the package here. Take those, clip them off. And we are going to tie these around the side of the fly. Just get 
those in there like that. On the sides. So they're on there. So pull them back and kind of trim them to about the same length as your marabou. You don't want them too long or they'll tangle with the shank. Or the um, tangle with the hook, sorry. And you don't want that. You want that thing swimming nicely. Next step, we're going to take some pearl blue crystal flash. We're only going to take one strand of this because these strands are quite a bit longer than the flash of it. We're going to take that one strand, fold it in half, and then we're going to tie that on the bottom of our shank, which is actually the top of our fly. Tie that in like so. Work your thread back. Pull your flash and trim it same length as you trimmed the flash a bit. Alright. After that, we're going to take some Kingfisher Blue Schloppen. You can use Peacock Blue, Kingfisher Blue, any kind of blue you, you have will work, but the original pattern calls for that Kingfisher Blue. Take your wand of slapping feather and try to find the fibers that reach towards the, the back of the shank. Get a nice portion fly, so we're about right there. Now we're going to take the rest of those fibers, peel them off, and we're going to tie this in right here stem off and bring the fibers back a little bit of moisture and we're gonna wrap this just like we did our marabou slight forward palmer so we can cover the stem up with our thread and make this fly really durable so there we got about one and a half two wraps of the slopping that is absolutely plenty wraps make sure it doesn't go anywhere clip the excess pull them back and wrap back over the stems to make sure our fly is nice and bulletproof so there we got most of the fly almost done there now we just got to add the egg head for that, we're going to take a piece of small fluorescent red nylon chenille. Make a little base for here. Make sure all those fibers are nice and neat. And we're going to pull the fluff off of the end of it like we did with the black chenille. Just a little bit of core exposed there. And then you're going to take one or two wraps towards the back here, fold it over forwards. Oops it over forwards and then take a few more wraps towards the front to get that a little closer to the eye. Now we'll work our thread back to the slopping and we're going to add just a little dab of super glue right here just to finish our fly to help finish our fly and to make sure that egg head is just about indestructible. It doesn't take a lot Super glue is very sticky. Next up, we're going to take this chenille and tightly wrap it backwards so it gets that nice round egg shape to it, like so. And capture that end of the chenille. Make sure when you're going all the way around, you're not cutting into your egg with your thread. That is something I tend to do a lot. But if you just go slow and pay attention, you shouldn't have that problem. Get the marabou out of our chenille. Clip it off. And then we can whip finish it. Now you can add a little bit more super glue or head cement at this point, but I am confident that I added enough where this fly is not going to fall apart. So there you have it. The Susqua Poacher. One of the go-to winter steelhead flies that will ride 
hook point up even though it's weightless and it'll catch lots of fish for you like it has for us thanks for watching